Well, we began with a look at America's crime crisis. And we hone in on the growing dangers in New York City's subway system. A wild fight broke out at Manhattan's Grand Central Station after one man allegedly refused to get out of another's way. The two threw punches and then tumbled down a moving escalator. The suspect in the incident was arrested and charged with assault. Another chilling scene, a man viciously pushed onto the subway tracks over the weekend in the Bronx. Good Samaritans thankfully rescued him with just seconds to spare. The suspect's still on the streets in that one. This one yesterday, the suspect has a special place in hell. A 48-year-old man died after he was shoved in front of an oncoming train during rush hour in Queens, which means you don't have a lot of time to save somebody. The tragedy happened when the victim accidentally bumped into another rider, triggering a fight between the two, according to police. And a look at the numbers. Transit crime in New York City up by 41% compared with last year. New York City Mayor Eric Adams insists it's not what it seems. Well, what is it? Dealing with actual crimes, those eight uh, homicides, and we're dealing with the perception of fear that people are feeling. That's the combination. And I must deal with that perfect per perception and the actual crime. We can't get away from the fact we have 3.5 million people using our subway system. We, we have to be honest about that. And those average of six crimes a day is not giving the impression that our system is out of control. Wow. Have you ever been bitten on the tukas by a perceptive crime? Uh, <laughs> you know, I have not. And here's the thing with Eric Adams. He was so great when he was running, right? When he was talking about law he's enforcement. He's a former Republican. He's a former Republican. Now he's right. a Democrat. Now he's That's a Democrat. That's who he is now. Yeah, so, right. so he'll say lots of things. But, you know, there was a perception when he was running that this was going to be somebody that would support police. This was somebody that was going to uh, have real talk about what's going on in the city. And so now while he has done things, there are more police officers on the streets. So I'm, I'm in New York for a little bit. I was in Florida full time, you know, during the pandemic and all that stuff. But I want him to tell um, that lady that got attacked in that horrific video that we saw just a couple weeks ago that's Lost about to lose eye. the sight in her eye. eye yeah. um, tell her that that uh, what happened to her is a perception, right? And so I, I think that we really have to talk serious about this. And I'll say one last thing. I'm a big 190 pound black man. Right. So I have to watch my back in New York City in a way that I never had to before all of this stuff. And so if I have to watch my back like this, I wonder um, how other people are, are sort of experiencing this city. You mean everybody else who might not be ready to fight? Uh, yeah, maybe everybody else isn't as physically imposing. As <laughs> <laughs> it's so true, though. But even if you had been, you know what this mayor says? This is all about guns. Mm. Kennedy, the majority of crimes, even the eight killings, mm. sadly, two of them with guns, the rest of them with hands, you know, shove. I don't know, maybe there was a bump that shoves somebody. I don't think so. This is hand on hand. This is hand on hand combat. Well, also the the perception is very bad for the rest of the city because if there is a perception that New York is unsafe, people aren't going to come on vacation here. You know, normally uh, people would flock to the city for the holidays and for New Year's Eve to see all the window displays. But if you're hearing that people are shoved in front of the subway and you can't afford to Uber every everywhere, why would you come and spend your precious vacation money that isn't going as far this year? Why would you spend it? here. The perception is actually the thing that is driving people out of New York. They have friends who've moved to Florida, just like Rob. And they're like, well, what is it like down there? That's ah, great. You know, we're at the beach 12 months out of the year. Schools have remained open. Businesses are thriving here. There are for rent signs on all of the street fronts and people are scared to take the subway because, you know, yeah. and, and now when I ride the subway, I always stand in the middle. So I'm not close to the edge of the platform because I I don't want something like this to happen because there are wild-eyed people everywhere. And that's how they describe two well, of these most recent attackers. And so now you have to have court awareness and pay attention to everything all the time. That's not enjoying life. That is not a good quality you know of life. And that is not just perception. Sad about what you said, too, where you stand. So you're in a hurry. You're trying to get to your job. Everybody wants to be in the edge of that platform so you can get in and out faster so you're not late for work or taking your kids to school. I mean, that seems like also another really, really unfair advantage for the criminals because they can just pull you right off that that platform so emily i mentioned the other things that people are using hammers mm -hmm. oh. the the number of stabbings is up exponentially inside the subway what is the disconnect and and i know rob mentioned the politics of this 
But but who is Mayor Adams now? Because he's not who he, who he said he was. He's not as advertised. I don't see him as a New Yorker anymore because a New Yorker is committed to safety. He, it, a New Yorker is committed to enjoying the city to its fullest and, and embracing diversity and also keeping ourselves safe. And knowing that we can ride the subway and knowing that we can enjoy Times Square and performances without maybe getting stabbed in the back. And that's the thing about where you stand on the platform is there have been plenty of attacks from behind. Mm -hmm. We saw in the uptick as well yeah. of sexual assaults and rapes, horrifying videos of women where um, one repeat offender was running after them. So you have to have eyes on the back of your head. What I don't understand is that for a mayor who was savvy during campaigning, and by savvy I just mean having common sense, why... What does he have to gain by downplaying the crime rate? Because if anything, if he said we are committed to law and order here in this town, we are committed to seeking out these attackers that are still at large, we are committed to protecting the Asian American population, the black American population, the elderly, the subway riders, the 3.5 million he cited, et cetera, then that would do a long way toward reassuring those of us that live here, those of us that commute here, and those of us that travel here, that it's actually going to be safe. Denying the problem does nothing for making us feel like we are in good hands. And by the way, so, you know that father of three that was stabbed to death on a subway platform in the neck? The reason he was stabbed is because that attacker, who was a recidivist and also still at large, was harassing a female uh, New York police wow. uh, department officer, and he stepped in. Mm. There is nothing to show for being a good citizen here or for in any way protecting yourself. You're damned no matter what. Mm -hmm. Kaylee, um, just real quickly, what about the politics at play here? Because what Emily is saying, well, what is the benefit of telling people a lie? That, that crime isn't as bad as it is. Well, he certainly won't get called on to help other Democrats across the country. No. Maybe he's looking to, you know, have some free time and doesn't want to be popular. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. I mean, the images I've been watching on the screen, these are real time, the most powerful GOP ads, except they're not funded by the GOP. They're brought to you by the criminals of New York City. And the taxpayers. With, and the taxpayers and a derelict governor and a derelict mayor who are doing nothing about this. But this is playing out across the country. I mean, you see it here in New York where Lee Zeldin has closed the gap by seven points. Points, still double digits, but the Republican gubernatorial nominee coming close. And then you see it at play across the country in Pennsylvania. I just, I was stunned. Um, I read this as we were coming to air. This was Dave Weigel, a political reporter, who asked John Fetterman, who's the Democrat nominee in Pennsylvania, why does someone who committed first degree murder deserve clemency? Here's his answer. It's really a very simple choice. I believe the perfect metaphor is the Shawshank Redemption. That's a touchstone that virtually everyone has seen, everyone understands. I've asked people, would you want Morgan Freeman to die in prison or not? And I've never met anyone that said, yeah, you should die in prison. Okay, that's a fictional film. Mm -hmm. uh, the GOP has put that out along with five murderers that Fetterman has voted to let out of prison. We've already talked about the woman who was murdered with scissors he was the lone vote for, yes. a man who was murdered with garden shears 26 times. Time stabbed mm -hmm. another man who bragged he was the son of the devil and he shot and stabbed someone another man who beat someone to death with a baseball bat oh. these are not Morgan Freeman's these are not Shawshank Redemption's these are people who have real victims and John Fetterman and other Democrats across the country they're a metaphor for why That's it right. may explain how they see the rest of us who are potential victims and real victims mm -hmm. they think we're also acting in a movie so they just ignore us exactly all right we'll move